Hey guys, we are back with part two with the amazing, talented Tim Reynolds. <laughs> if you didn't join us last week, what you need to know is that you need to Google or look up on YouTube Tim Reynolds. He is an amazing singer, songwriter, and violinist. And we are continuing this week just talking about his influences and also what he would say to inspiring artists. So, Tim, let's jump back in. Um, I really, I'm really curious, because um, we talked a lot last week about um, just what kind of your journey was coming up. You know, you, you went to school here in Rome. Um, you even got private lessons, learning the violin and everything. But then you decided to go to college at Berkeley. So you were up in Boston, and you did a major in performing for the violin. And then after you graduated, you performed around the United States, and then you went to Kenya, yes. which of course is incredible, not only personally for you as an experience, yeah. but an incredible experience for you um, to have under your belt as an artist. Yes. Um, which Is that something you would recommend for other artists to go outside of their comfort zone? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like being an artist, like one of your biggest jobs is to uh -huh. always push like the, the limits of your comfort. So um, traveling, I think, is a big thing that every every creative person, I think every person should do it. Yes. <laughs> but I live, creatively speaking, yeah. I, I think especially if you want to be um, inspired in, in new ways, you should definitely travel mm -hmm. for sure. Yes. And so can you speak to things that maybe are not musical necessarily, but things mm -hmm. that can, maybe it's food or something like that. What what can inspire your art? I'm curious. Um. So... <laughs> <laughs> I think that something that inspires my art is that um, I've always been very interested in psychology. I've always been interested mm -hmm. in, in observing people while they do the things that they do, mm -hmm. um, while they speak the things that they speak and behave in the ways that they behave. Okay. So um, I find that a lot of my time is spent just, uh, it's spent with people. It's okay. been actually talking with people, asking them questions, Asking them how do they get to where they're at? Um, why do they think the way that they think? What is their perception on different subjects? Things like that. And I learn a lot from that because I'm like, wow, um, this person is so different from me. Mm -hmm. And so it's like we have this huge elephant and I can see like where the trunk is, but then they can see kind of like where the tail is. And so after you get like so many people's different per perceptions, it kind of, you kind of have this vision of what the actual right. thing looks like. Uh -huh. And so I want to say that, I don't know, those types of things really inspire my music. I read a lot of, I read a lot of books. Do you? Um, yes. What do you read? I read a lot of, uh, I want to say I read a lot of Christian books okay. that talk about um, like how people feel loved, like mm -hmm. communicating with people, different things like that. Um, even non-Christian books, I just like sure. having different people's perceptions on how to communicate with other people, how to treat other people, why people do the things that they do mm. and think the ways that they think. And then even how people's upbringings, especially like in their childhood um, and in their like family lines, like how that affects how they are now and mm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Especially nowadays with the issues with like racism and things like that. Yeah. Um, I've even kind of grown to have this understanding that a lot of people don't necessarily do the things that they do because they want to or make the decisions because they want to, but right. it's because of how they were raised. Mm. And that's simply put. So mm. um, these types of things, I like spend so much yeah, time. Yeah, like sort of that nature versus nurture. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. intriguing. It's I really like intriguing. spend a lot of time like really just diving into these things. Wow. Yeah. And so you would say that influences yeah. what you write about. Is there an example? Do you ever talk about, for instance, race or love, forgiveness, mm -hmm. community, relationships? I mean, what are some of those topics that you try to tackle in your art? Yes. So um, I have this recent song that I wrote called The Apology. Okay. Um, and it's an instrumental, but for me, it's like, I, when I started having this melody that played in my head, I started, th I, I was like, what am I thinking about right now? Like, what, why do I feel like this way? It wasn't like a sad feeling, but it was kind of like this very sentimental feeling. Mm. And what was happening was that I was thinking of a situation that happened where um, on one end in the situation, this person had 
hurt me. Mm. And it's like I wanted to forgive them, but then I also wanted to be justified in why I was hurt. I was like, no, yeah. you hurt me. And it's not my fault. It's your fault. Right. But I also wanted to really just move forward in that relationship and I wanted to forgive them. And so they apologized to me and I kind of had a decision to make. I was like, I can either forgive them yeah. or I could just hold them against them, hold it against them. Right. And I know this will kind of tear the relationship apart slowly but surely. And I know that. Mm. Um, on the other hand, I was picturing myself in that person's shoes because I have been where I've hurt somebody and it's not necessarily their fault. Right. And they had the choice to either forgive me or hold it against me. And so um, it was kind of like this idea that I just had. I was like, wow, like this is kind of like what an apology feels like because mm. it's a choice on the other person's end on whether or not to receive it mm. or to just reject it. Right. So, um, and it was just, I don't know, it was just this weird cool feeling that I just had. And I was just like, oh, this song should be called The Apology. Um, another one of my songs is, the lyrics are just, um, I just want to say that I love you and that I need you. And so it's talking about how I just realized that I was like, I have a lot of really good friends around me and a lot of uh, good family around me and friends that have become family to me. Right. And a lot of times I'm very bad at communicating how much I love them just through words. Mm -hmm. um, they might know that through actions or things like that, but sometimes people aren't able to, to necessarily see that. Right. So I was like, let me just write a song to plainly tell these people, I love you and I actually need you in my life. Wow. Um, and so that became, it's funny because when I, I wrote that song, that was like one of the number one songs people started remembering when really? I would do my concerts. They were like, yeah, I know that song, the one that goes like this. Uh -huh. So um, it, it was just very relatable because I think a lot of people, especially when maybe like a family member or somebody that's close to them like passes away, mm -hmm. that is the number one thing people say. They're like, wow, I just wish that I had one more chance to tell that person, hey, you meant a lot to me. Right. Or that like I, I just really loved you and I appreciated you being in my life. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know what, why not wait? Let me write a song about it. You know. I love that. Yeah. And, and to, to make that so important, you know, it, while they're still living. I yes. think that's really, that's really neat that you can communicate mm -hmm. that relationship, um, yeah. you know, while you have the chance. That's, yeah. that's so neat. <laughs> so I kind of want to go back to what you were saying about um, just songs and learning about forgiveness and everything. Do you think it's important, not just as human beings, but especially as artists, to work mm -hmm. on yourself? and like work on who you are as a person mm -hmm. before you even try to communicate mm -hmm. something human in your art? Yes, um, I think that is like the number one thing that is, 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 is almost missing okay. nowadays. Okay. Um, I notice even sometimes in my own art um, when I was in college, I, I noticed that almost every semester my musical kind of influence and even sometimes the way I sounded, it was almost changing okay. all the time. And I was like, wow, this is so interesting. Why is it doing that? Mm -hmm. um, and that was partly because I was getting to know myself um, just away from music, away from people. Like, what do I like? Yeah. What do I not like? What am I drawn to? What really grabs my attention? What completely turns away my attention? What is something that makes me feel sad? What is something that makes me feel happy? Right. What makes me feel angry. Um, right. And it, it was also partly because I realized I was like, well, I don't really know myself like that. Like, I really don't. Um, I haven't really spent so much time alone. And this and was in just, college when you yeah. were kind of working yeah. through this. Okay, okay. I was just like, wow, I haven't, I haven't done this before. And so even when I went to Kenya, mm -hmm. that eight months, I felt like it was kind of this thing of being away from everything that I was familiar with. So I could really learn, okay, who is Tim Reynolds? Like, right. what do I think about myself? Like, do I think really negative things about myself? Do I think positive things about myself? Mm. Um, and, and to me in that moment, it didn't really matter. It was just like, what do I think of myself? Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. if I want to change that, how do I change it? So when I came back from Kenya, I noticed that I was like, wow, like, I have changed so much. And then my music started changing so much, the way wow. I communicated started changing so much and people even came to tell me, they were like, you, your music has matured. Mm. 
mm. in such a different way. So you think it was maturity? Yes. In a lot of, in a lot of yes. ways? Yes. Okay. And maturity, I feel like it comes from just really, first of all, understanding yourself and then kind of going from that foundation mm -hmm. up. And so... Um, I lost my train of thought. No, that was good. No, because yeah. <laughs> what, what's striking me about that is just the fact that what you're saying, and, mm -hmm. and you can speak into this more if you want, but what you're saying is you have to know yourself to know what you're going to say. Yes. That's, yes. that's really, wow, and mature yes. to, to use the yes. word. Yeah. You know? And oh, I remember what I was going to say. Yeah. When I was in Kenya, I honestly did not practice that much. There was actually a period of time okay. where I went about, like, it was like a few months without just touching my violin unless I really needed to. Huh. I didn't practice. I didn't listen to music like that. I was just like, let me just chill out. Let me just get away from music for a minute. Let me see, like, what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. And so when I came back to it, when I, especially when I came back to Boston, when I came back right. into the States, it was crazy because it, it almost felt like I had been like studying music, but I hadn't. I'd just been kind of like studying more about myself mm -hmm. as a person. And then everything was so easy to communicate. Wow. I was like, I'm feeling sad. This is easy to communicate, like whatever I, I want to do. And, um, and it's very healthy. It's, it's extremely healthy. I find that a lot of times people can communicate things through their craft, but then it's very hard for them to just communicate face-to-face, -face, like, with yeah. people and even with themselves. Yeah, so, and, and I think uh, a lot of times artists get this, it's not just a bad rap, but it's almost this expectation of, mm -hmm. that to be an artist is to be a suffering person, yeah. both, like, personally and <laughs> professionally. Yeah. And, and that can be very unhealthy mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times we artists feel like we have to live in this forlorn state yeah. or this sort of disconnected existence and, and and really that's not what we human beings need yeah and so not only does our art suffer suffer for it our our entire humanity <laughs> ends yeah. up suffering our soul suffers for that yeah and um and so what you're saying is quite the opposite and i love that what you're saying is no take care of yourself as a person mm -hmm. if you need to put down the violin whatever mm -hmm. your violin might be you know speaking to our audience as well yeah. you need to put it down put it down yeah. take time for yourself take time to care Mm -hmm. for your soul mm -hmm. and then pick up that violin again and yes. magic will happen yeah. because you've taken time to, to get to know yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's so important. I love that. I love yeah. that you're about, um, you know, safety and personal health and not just, you know, art for the sake of art. Yeah. Cause that, yeah. Can, that can be really dangerous sometimes I think. Yeah. Um, okay. My last question is, um, what would you say to an inspiring artist? Oh, man. Let's see. Go back. Talk to little Tim <laughs> back in the day. I would say that everything is okay. Um, you don't have to fear making mistakes. You don't have to fear about messing up. Um, to really take time and just be patient with the whole process. It, um, it, it's different for everybody. And it's very hard to, it's, it's very hard nowadays because everything is so easily accessible and we have social media and everything. And so you, you almost see kind of like people's processes mm -hmm. on display. And a lot of times it's, it's pretty messed up. It's pretty fake. Like mm. some people, they look like they reached this point overnight and they didn't. They didn't, and you hear their backstory. It's like, it took them, it took them years to get there, yeah. you know? And it took them a lot of studying. It took them a lot of, you know, maybe backing away from that craft for a minute and then coming back into that. Right. So um, I would definitely tell um, a young uh, aspiring artist to just don't, don't be fearless. Make the mistakes and uh, to, to be patient and to take time. Take the time. Yeah. Take the time. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Tim, for being here, for you. sharing your story and inspiring all of us. Yeah. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to what you're going to do next. Thank you so much.